Hey everybody, so I'm just going to explain my workflow for this. So I'm going to do Command J, make a layer, and I'm going to go down to Puppet Warp. Now watch how I carefully select around the elbow and the head. So I'm just pinning different spots around the head and elbow because I don't want that to be affected when I am doing the puppet work. So now I'm going to pin a location and I'm pushing it up to round out the bum, pulling up the feet, and just rounding out that little curve in the bum to make it nice and round. And I kind of pull it in towards the elbow a little bit. Just make sure that you don't distort it so that it's unrealistic and makes the baby look deformed. You want to keep everything relatively normal looking still. I'm just tweaking it a little bit, bringing that foot up, and I rounded out that bum. And I'm just, I'm playing with it a little bit, but I'm making sure that it's still normal looking. So you don't, the last thing you want to do is puppet wart something and then it doesn't look human. So always remember that when you're doing your proportions, make sure that everything's still in proportion. To the body. Okay, so now I've check marked it, and this is going to show you now it's brought up the fabric on the bottom. So I'm going to take the eraser and I am just clicking the before and after to show you that top layer is the puppet warp layer, and I'm going to erase the bottom and get rid of the fabric that. Um, has that hard edge because the two layers they're not identical anymore because the puppet warp layer it brought up the one side okay so that goes shows you the difference and now I'm gonna go to liquefy because I'm just gonna smooth out the edge of the bum you don't always have to liquefy but sometimes it's a good thing and um, so a good trick with the liquify tool is you make the size of the brush the same size as the area where you want to move up or down. So I'm liquefying her cheeks a little bit to make them a little bit more round, not squished by her hand. And then the edge of her bum and her back, I'm just smoothing it out a little bit just so that it's not distracting. And see the smaller size is for the smaller areas. And then you make it a little bit bigger for the bigger areas. Otherwise, a small brush will make it like a sharp indentation or point. But a larger brush will make it a larger area that you're either pushing or pulling in. The Liquify tool is an amazing tool with newborn photography. So I'm just smoothing out the edges. And... I'm, that little fat roll where her head is on her head, I'm just adjusting that just a little bit, just slightly because I don't want it to be so bulging. And then I'm just going to even out her head a little bit. Not a lot, just a touch. And you can, this is very helpful and beneficial when you have a baby that uh, has a little bit of a cone head. Her head was pretty perfect, but um, I just evened it out a little bit. And then the liquify tool I'm also using to adjust the fabric in that one corner. It was a little dark in that one spot, so I just adjusted it slightly. So just showing you the difference. And now I'm going to flatten it. Okay. And now I'm just going to zoom in to see the skin imperfections. And that's the patch tool. So I'm just, I made a duplicate layer and I'm just patching the imperfections on her skin on that duplicate layer and that way it's, it's not going to damage the original layer of the picture. So if you make a mistake, it's not damaging all the work you've already done. So I'm just taking the red blotchy sections on her face from the soother and her skin was really good so there's not a lot to worry about, which is awesome. So just the apparent imperfections, 
I don't tend to do a lot with this skin, like removal of flakes and things like that, because I think that the more flakier the skin, it shows how fresh the baby is. That's just my personal opinion. So I'm just looking at everything, and um, I prefer the patch tool over the clone tool or the um, the other one. I forget what it's called. Okay, so I'm going to flatten that layer, and then I'm going to go to my favorite skin actions, and I'm going to do foundation medium. I accidentally pressed strong. I'm going to do foundation medium with totally rad. And that's just the initial base layer. And then after that, after I, I do that, I'm going to use the deblotch medium. Some people prefer to use the strong strengths, but I just find them, they make the baby look artificial. And I want to maintain some form of texture. Okay, so now I'm just brushing it on. And I'm bringing the strength of the brush up to 100, the opacity of the brush. You have to make sure that your brush is on white because you're painting on a black mask. Okay, and then I'm going to flatten that layer as soon as I'm finished. And now I'm going to run the deblotch medium. These are bigger actions, so they do take a little bit more time to run them, but if you have a clear computer with not a lot of stuff on it, they run fairly quickly. But you definitely, if you have these totally rad skin actions, you don't need to buy the portraiture, which is like a two or three hundred dollar program, a plug-in for Photoshop. And I flatten it. And oh, first I made an extra layer and I'm going into camera raw. And I'm just going to adjust the saturation of the reds and oranges and the magentas just because she had funny skin. So I'm just pulling the saturations down a little bit. And the great thing about Camera Raw is that it's just going to bring it right back into Photoshop. And you can adjust the layer. So there's that layer, and I find I overdid it a little bit, so I'm going to adjust the opacity. I found it was a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring the opacity down. And then I'll adjust that, and then, yeah, so I bring it down to like 30-ish percent, and then I flatten it. And then I'm going to run my action from Angie Knutson's Presets and Actions. It's a set called Little Rock. And it is by far the best set I've ever bought. And my favorite one is Tourmaline. I hope I said that right. I don't know for sure. And I find that's just a one click. It's like the best thing ever. And there we go. It's gorgeous, beautiful, creamy skin. And it just deepens the shadows, and I just love everything about it. It's just so pretty. And I find that it'll work on every backdrop and every uh, setup that I do, no matter what the colors are, usually. Oh, I just want to sharpen the eyelashes a little bit. Because she was a blondie, so her eyelashes blend in a little bit. And so I just take a full opacity brush, paint it on, 
and you're good. Flatten it. And now I'm just going to show you, oh, I noticed a little speck underneath her eyelashes, so I'm just going to take that, get rid of it. She had a little bit of gunk in her eyes. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And that's the, the patch. Um, it's on the same tool as the patch tool, but it's the one that just matches the pixels around it and flatten it and then I'm just going to go back in my history just to take a snapshot just to show you the difference for the before and after. See the first image and then the final product. Pretty awesome, hey? So if you guys have any more questions about anything that you want to learn with Photoshop, I know it's a really daunting thing to try and learn when you're first starting out with your photography. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I would love to make a video specifically to your requests. And I'm going to save it. Thanks, guys.